it just watching some 1800s and 1800s they've got awareness of attacking concepts and principles but they kind of tend to add too much unnecessary moves and the big key question is what defense so let's see if they fall into the category it's the expected generalization from my own personal research so once again they understand the attacking concepts and principles the awareness of it but in terms of looking at the back end looking at um, how to then counter attack properly in a sense of keeping themselves safe that is really quite questionable it's something that stands out more so than the 1900 okay so let's see how we get on here so nice attacking this could be for both because they're both 1800 so it can be signified for both of them so they've both got castled and they're just attacking capturing looking for the next position to capture it looks defensive this center thing here is like a storm wall type thing so that's just basic chess so as we know the 1900s have got really good at being being able to, being able to play basic chess and that's off of the back of their experience of being 1800s where they're attempting to practice the basic chess but they fall foul of attacking way too much and not really covering the defense the 1900 understands that understands both attacking defending those concepts quite nicely but they oversimplify sometimes they can play simple chess well but it's not excellent and these little tiny things of not being able to build the big picture of their attack and support their attack and then keep the momentum going and capturing simply sometimes putting the pressure on themselves by trying to be a bit too arty and keeping tension where it's not necessary that's what lets them down in the 1800s what lets them down is the defense because they're practicing the nice basic simple chess openings good and the transition from the opening to the start of the mid game will start to tell in terms of the weaknesses in their defense and they're overly attacking they may go overly backwards but not defending if that makes any sense which doesn't improve their position on the board so again looking for the attacks We've got a nice two on one here can expect the king to come and defend king's not coming to defend so again defense is not looking too good but they're probably saying a piece for a piece and they're going for it anyway because this doubles their pawns on this side so the rook's in the center of the board just like i said they're just so interested in attacking it's um unreal but these are two 1800s so it probably could just end up being a draw petering out to be a draw bishop's obviously not going back he's attacking their bishop again attack 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 they just love attacking generalization obviously it's a generalization but you can see how then the transition through to the 1900 then they kind of realize that attacking too much maybe does not improve their position so much so then they revert back to playing simpler chess and being more reserved with their moves going forward but as we've mentioned the 1900s have their weaknesses too so it's attack 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 you can see this attack in this pawn nice and simple he's supporting this pawn wants to get this rook into the game somehow probably thing if we go here is rooks coming here but then we can just hit the hit the rook but then this rook doesn't have any support if the pawn takes and takes so maybe not that one yeah. looking for a two on one isn't it pushing this pawn back in here so basic chess we know what we're, they're trying to attempt potentially but again when we do our calculations of other people's games it's other people thinking they don't think like us we don't think like them the general consensus of 
adding too much unnecessary moves is a key thing for the 1800s and having that arty flair you know to kind of showboat a little bit about their position really does stand strong in the 1800s which is a weakness because it doesn't really cover the back end when they're being a bit showy and arty this one looks like it's going to draw, come out to be a draw. I know this player's got, the white player's got plus one. But um, they're going to have to make something of it if they were going to try and do something with the plus one. But they're still looking to get this thing, as you can see here. He's got the rook defending. Bishop can't really come in to defend. So he's delaying this and then getting this pawn pushed so that they can take this pawn. Simple chess. How does he block it? Well, yep, yeah, it's not blocking it per se because the pawn can still move, but they are attempting to get the bishop here to give the defense on this pawn so they won't be able to follow through with their attack. So, in the early doors, it probably would have been, in my head, would have been better attacking the bishop there and taking this pawn off the board at least i mean the rook could have come down but it would have been a better fit position i think for white because it's giving them things to think about whereas now they're just allowing the other player to get all his pieces into the game lock everything down so the one with the extreme attacking <laughs> The one with the extreme attacking, I mean, he's blocking this rook here so the king can take. So if the pawn did take, then obviously so the rook's going to have to come here just to attack this pawn. Gives them something to think about. He's going to get a check on the king with the pawn here. So it's going to be a pawn for a pawn. He could sacrifice the rook by taking the bishop. It's like what we were just saying. It's like, what defense, you know? So it's like they're playing a mirror image of themselves really here. And they do a sacrifice, take it off the board. Maybe this one, because don't want this one being passed. So they've got two rooks, but they've got like some nice little pawns here on this side here. Yeah, it looks like it's just blocking everything off. It's not doing that. King's probably going up. And it's like a basic stonewall ending. I wouldn't be surprised if they offered a draw, although this one is 1886, that one is 1865. They're probably not going to offer a draw or take a draw because they're slightly higher. So lots of movements now. Ooh, a bit unlucky that that one's not there as well. Is he just locking this in? No, it's attacking still. Rook defends. It's on a white square. Bishop comes here, just bang, bang, bang. Now takes it off the board. Could do that just to get a rook off the board, but I don't think it works really because. No. King move. problem with black is as we've mentioned before they've got the two rooks but the two rooks power base is having open files and now what he's doing is he's actually going to give him it but if he did take he would get the rook for free and this rook can't defend so that's probably a nice move to actually make what defense Gives him time. Does he take with the rook? No, he's going to be hitting the rook there. Can just push this up and then job's done, isn't it, on that side? And shuffle around a bit. He'd have to um, exchange one of the rooks. Yeah, locks it down. Why not? Keep it simple and basic.
I mean, if they attempt to try and get this up, the rook's just going to come across. Is he trying to block here with the bishop and then start pushing this up? That might be an idea. I think he's going for that. So he's going to have to give the rook up at some point before this pawn gets elevated. He's just going to push, push, push. If he doesn't take it off the board, it's going to get taken. And this rook maybe can come and just take, but the bishop will take it. He needs to make a decision now. Those black... Oh, and then... Maybe one more. They've maybe got one more chance. And then he's got all of these passes to deal with. So it looks like White will be winning in the end. In the end game. The two rooks. Yeah, nicely played. But yeah, the ball fell into the 1800 that I'm aware of, so I'm fairly comfortable with our descriptor. But the rook comes back, it's going to have to just exchange itself, but this rook is not going to be able to deal with two pawns, and the king is going to be too late to the party. Still push. Yeah, nice one. Good vision there, good vision. Didn't really need to move the rook, I don't think. That's going a little bit too excessive. It's almost like showboating. You know you've got a good position, and yet you're going supporting the good position even more, losing a bit of tempo. I don't think they needed to do that, personally. I genuinely don't. Yep, yeah, so take, take. Made it even worse for them. Made it even worse for them. He could have just taken that and taken that and then it would have been a rook. But then he still has to deal with these pawns, which he's never going to win. So in any event, White was winning. Yeah, he'll be resigning now.